Watch you guys got another video here for you. In this one, we're taking a look at solid state drives versus hard drives. Which do you need? Which should you buy? We're talking about benchmarks here. There's loads of different variants of uh, hard drives and solid state drives. These two here are mechanical drives. These are pretty common in uh, machines that you use today. Three and a half inch and two and a half inch are in desktops and also laptops. Now, if you do have one of these, then they are pretty slow but they are very affordable and you get a lot of space on these drives uh, compared to solid state drives and other types of drives. Now this drive here is a two and a half inch mechanical drive, which you normally find in laptops and other types of devices. They go up to around about four to five terabytes, these little small two and a half inch drives here, and they're very cheap, but they're very slow. So if you've got a laptop, you might want to upgrade to something like this, which is a solid state drive, which is much faster than a mechanical drive there's no moving parts on these and they're pretty decent uh, compared to these now the problem is is if you're trying to get like for like with a two and a half inch drive compared to a solid state drive say for instance four terabytes is going to cost you around about 400 pounds for a, a solid state drive now they've got the pmy here which is a pretty decent uh solid state drive they're all different types out there on the market this one is pretty decent uh, I'll tell you, tell you about the speeds of these and show you some of the benchmarks for these. But this one here has sequential reads and writes on it of 535 megabytes per second uh, reads and also 516 megabytes per second writes, which is pretty decent compared to a mechanical drive where you're probably only going to get 100 odd for a mechanical drive like this one here. So I'll show you the benchmarks a little bit later on. Now that is the two and a half inch drives, which are for laptops and small devices, but you do have three and a half inch drives, which are for NAS drives, desktops and storage and stuff like that. They are still very, very slow, but you get a massive amount of storage up to like 12 terabytes on each drive if you want to buy that size. Uh, compared to a solid state drive, which is going to cost you around about four terabytes will cost you around about 400 odd pounds, which is quite a lot of money. So it's still not quite finished yet, the uh, mechanical drive. Now these little ones here, are the SATA ones. These are not the NVMe drives. These are SATA, which are exactly the same as a solid state drive. The speeds are not much different uh, depending on which manufacturer you get, but they are pretty much the same. Now, these ones here are SATA drives. They're just smaller and uh, basically they go into the motherboard. They don't need any power or SATA cables and you will get SATA speeds on these, which is the same as these really. Depending on the manufacturer and brand will determine what sort of speeds you get. Now, I don't think it really matters what sort of solid state drive you buy. If you're moving up from a mechanical drive, any sort of solid state drive is going to be better than a mechanical drive. Now, you can see a couple of little notches in here on this one. This tells me it's a SATA drive, but these NVMe drives, this is a Gen 3 version. Now, if your board supports Gen 3 NVMe drives, then this is going to absolutely change your life. These things are super fast, and we're moving on even faster speeds to Gen 4 now. But this one is a Gen 3 one terabyte drive made by Kingston, this one, the new KC2500. You're talking 3,000 plus reads and writes on these drives compared to solid state drives, which are 500 odd. And then you've got the mechanical drives, which are really, really slow. So even upgrading from a mechanical drive to a solid state drive or an NVMe drive will be a massive jump in performance. So check those out and uh, have a look at the benchmarks a little bit later on. So now it doesn't really matter what version you buy of NVMe drive when it comes to the Gen 3. They're all pretty fast, so choose which one suits your needs. But these Kingston KC 2500 are pretty fast drives, as you'll see later on. Now let's move on to the next one, which is Gen 4, which is ridiculously fast. And these go up to 5,000 uh, reads and 5,000 writes for the Sabrent uh, Rocket, this one. This is a fourth gen, and if your board supports uh, four gen uh, type uh, NVMe drives, then why not go for one of these? These are super fast, but again, these are super expensive as well. They're not cheap, so if you're looking to get into an NVMe drive, then take a look at the Sabrent Rocket. So it goes to show you how far we've come compared to mechanical drives compared to the Gen 4 uh, types of NVMe drives. Now, this is a riser card, and basically, this can take uh, SATA type drives and also NVMe drives. So, if your board doesn't support an M.2, you can use one of these riser cards and put these in, and uh, that will give you uh, the ability to use those on your PC. Uh, again, uh, I'm not sure what the speed differences will be, but I'll probably make a video like that uh, later on 
Uh, we'll take a look at this external drive as well. If you've got one of these, uh, take a look at the SSDs you can use nowadays, which are way faster, or just buy yourself a cheap SSD and use the adapter, and you can use that to store data way faster than any mechanical drive. Also, you've got these types of enclosures, which will allow you to use NVMe uh, types of drives in them or SATA drives, which will give you super fast speeds inside uh, an external type of device. We've got USB 3.1. Uh, we've also super fast speeds on them. If you want to use USB flash drives with fast speed for copying data, then you can do. There's loads of options available out there. And just check the reads and writes for all of these and you'll see the differences in speed. Now, if you're copying data from a mechanical drive to a solid state drive or an NVMe drive or Gen 4 type of NVMe drive, you will be restricted by the speed of the actual mechanical drive. You're not going to get the full speeds as I'll show you later on. And it works vice versa whether you're copying it from it or reading data. So bear that in mind if you're using a solid state drive for Windows like this one and you're putting all your games on here, it's going to be a little bit slower copying data across because it can't keep up with the speeds of the solid state drive or the NVMe drive. Now, another thing you won't get is a boost in performance in games by using the solid state drive for all your games. All it will do is speed up load times. It's not going to actually change frames per second or anything like that if you put all your games on a solid state drive, just to be clear there. Let's do some benchmarks so you can see basically what it's like to have an NVMe drive. Now, this one I've got in here at the moment is a Gen 3, and I'll show you what the speed differences are. Now, what we're going to do is copy this large file, which is a 30-odd gig file, from a NVMe Gen 3 drive to a mechanical drive. And that will be uh, pretty slow because, obviously, it's copying from an NVMe drive to a mechanical drive, and it's going to restrict how much data can be copied across at a certain speed. So let me just show you basically what you can expect if you've got a mechanical drive and an NVMe drive. So I'm going to cut and paste this across and start this off. I'm not too worried about it being so accurate. I just want to give you a guideline to how long it roughly takes. I have speeded the process up, and this is obviously, you can see now, in the two-minute-odd bracket, nearly three minutes to copy that file across, which is quite a long time. So it's not as fast as you think it is when you're copying data from the drive. So if you're doing some video editing and you're storing all your large files on a mechanical drive, then you can expect to have quite slow speeds by copying those large files across because of the mechanical drive is a lot slower. So let's copy it back to the NVMe drive from a mechanical drive this time, and we'll see what sort of speeds we can expect. Now, these are read and write speeds, so you can expect to be very slow speeds on these mechanical drives. Even though the, uh, the drive we're using here is an A-Data drive on the other machine, which is super fast, and that should be reading at around about 2,500 or 3,000 sort of speeds. You can see the speed now is over three minutes, so you can get a rough idea of what you can expect if you've got Windows on an NVMe drive and a mechanical drive, and you're doing some sort of uh, uh, video editing and stuff, and you copy your files across. So let's go ahead now and copy one big 30 odd gig file from one NVMe to another NVMe drive, and we'll see roughly what that is. Now, this is the same drive. Now, moving it around on the same drive should be instant, and you shouldn't have any sort of delay, and you can see how quick that is there. So that's moving it around on the same drive. That's not two separate drives. I will do that test for you at a later date, but this one is just moving it around on the same drive. Now, let's talk about moving a file from uh, the NVMe drive onto that SanDisk SSD. This is a external device, so I'll just show you the sort of speeds you can get on this. So this is the Gen 1 SanDisk SSD. I'll speed it up, and uh, that's plugged into a USB port, and also you can see here it's took about two minutes to copy that 30-odd gig uh, file across, which isn't too shabby uh, for that type of device. So let's go ahead now and take a look at the read and write speeds for that uh, NVMe drive here. You can see pretty fast speeds, and that, that is the XPG uh, A-Data version there. So let's take a look at a hard drive, mechanical drive. You can see the speeds here are very, very slow indeed. And that will bottleneck any type of system if you're using a mechanical drive because you can see the speed difference. Now, taking a look at the Kingston uh, KC2500 Gen 3 drive, you can see the speeds are really, really fast. 
and that's the sort of speed you can expect from a Gen 3. Now, Gen 4 is another game altogether. You can see the speeds here. Read and writes are 4,938, and writes are 4,280. Really, really super fast speeds. And the PMY SATA drive gives you the 534 reads and 513 writes. So let's talk about pricing quickly. So we've got the Sabrent 2 terabyte rocket. This is the Gen 4 version, and you can see the speeds up there. 7,100 and 6,600 megabytes per second. That's 400 pounds. And then you've got the one terabyte version, which is 200 pounds. So it's a lot of money uh, for a drive, and it's only a small drive. It's not that big. And looking at SSDs, now, once you start getting out of the one terabyte size and getting up to four terabytes, trying to replace a mechanical drives, which is what you're going to need to do if you want to replace them, with something like this, it's going to cost you four or five hundred pounds just to replace a four terabyte mechanical drive with a solid state drive. And that's the sort of price you can expect to pay. So if you're looking to move into solid state drive territory or NVMe drive territory for your storage, it's going to cost quite a bit of money. So looking at the price in there and also looking how much stuff costs, I don't think anyone's going to be ditching their mechanical drives anytime soon. 500 to 400 pound for a four terabyte SSD. If you've got eight terabytes of space and you need that and you're going to have to buy two of those, it's going to cost you like a thousand pounds just for two SSDs. And if you're looking to buy an NVMe drive, then again, if you're looking at that Sabrent Gen 4, that's going to cost you a fair bit of money. So you could be just looking at a PC just for storage and Windows altogether. So bear that in mind if you're looking to ditch mechanical drives altogether. I think they're going to be around for a little while longer until those prices drop right the way down. Anyway, I hope this one's been useful to you. I just want to say a big special thanks to all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.